guest. My next guest is going to be back in action March 16th. It is Corey McKenna joining me here on the program. Corey, how are you? I'm good. Thanks, Howie. I'm doing great. Uh, it's good to see you back. Um, I know you haven't been as active as you like. I know there's been a lot of reasons for that. For people who might not know, why have we not seen you in the cage since December of 2022? Yeah, it's, uh, it's been a long layoff. I uh, went through a lot of health issues, back-to-back viral infections, couple injuries, um, just back-to-back for pretty much like the first, I think, eight or nine months of, of that last year. So unfortunately, it's Took, took matters out of my hands and I wasn't able to fight, but I kept working through it and I'm excited to be back. And, and I see you have new management as well. You're with uh, Iridium Sports. How did this all come together with you linking up with them? Yeah, um, I was looking at maybe making a little bit of a change. Um, I was splitting management between a couple people um, and they were amazing. Uh, I still have Jack involved, but you know, he's a, he's a very busy man and uh, I just, you know, I was still like maybe giving things a little change up, seeing, seeing what other opportunities are out there. And uh, I decided to give Iridium a try. Good stuff. Um, and, you know, you were pretty young when you got into the UFC. And I know you've talked about wanting to be more active, but in some ways, has this worked out better where you can kind of work on things uh, in your career? And like, you know, I'm sure when we see you in the cage, there's so many things you've developed uh, since the last time we saw you. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm not in a rush. You know, I, I, I got into it very young. So, uh, kind of forced me to slow down a little bit and uh, do things correctly. But um, no, I, I mean, I don't think it was a bad thing. I don't think it was a great thing. Obviously, I would have rather stay, stayed active and you know, kept my foot in the door a little bit, but it is what it is. And like I say, I've been able to keep working on other aspects of life and MMA and uh, keep my hand in where I can and uh, improve myself as a, as a well-rounded athlete during the time off. So, you know, I, I do think it will... You know, pay off in the fight but uh yeah i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say it was like great i, don't, I definitely don't want to speak speak that out there and end up in the same position again i hope it's like never gonna happen again but uh definitely made the most of most of a bad situation how, how are you able to sort of keep the lights on and train and all that stuff did you have to get another job like obviously when you're not fighting uh, you're, you're not bringing the money in how, how or is it sponsors like how are you able to kind of uh, keep things afloat yeah i uh i do a lot of coaching um i'm also very very uh let's say good with my money i'm a cheapskate i don't really spend money on stuff i live way below my means so it kind of allowed me to um you know it gave me a little bit more freedom but yeah i, I just savings and coaching on the side you know live and blow my means and uh, i was able to get through it um let's talk about your opponent here uh seven and one record what do you know about her how do you feel like you match up against her yeah, um, you know, great a, a great opponent. Um, no easy fights in the UFC, obviously. So uh, expect nothing less. You know, she's a world class black belt, LFA champ, like all these accolades. Um, so I think it's gonna be a really exciting fight and a great opportunity for me to test my skills and show everybody the the work that we put in behind the scenes in this time off. And I'm really excited for it. Obviously, you got a lot of really great training partners over there at Team Alpha Male. You got Macy Barber, you got Jan Shonan. Uh, who, who have you mainly had a chance to work with? Macy fighting uh, a week before you, right? So that that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's everyone's in camp around here. Like, say, Jan's in camp, Macy's in a camp. Uh, one of my main training partners just for uh, Tina Black. She got that like viral knockout on A one. Um, hopefully, she'll get signed soon. Uh, but yeah, like, say, like phenomenal level at the gym here right now. Uh, I was also just in San Diego training with Angela Hill, Diana Bishop, Jess Penny, stuff like that. So, like, very fortunate to be surrounded by nothing but high-level athletes and able to share the mats and, you know, get, you know, develop each other's skills day to day and support each other. So, I'm really, I'm really grateful for for my team around me right now. Um, I, I know, obviously, when you're off for a bit, sometimes it's tougher to get back in and do the weight cut. Uh, how is that going ahead of the fight? Oh, great. Honestly, better than usual. Um, I'm ahead of schedule. I'm, everything's, you know, everything's done. I'm uh, checking off the boxes and ready to go. Obviously, uh, you know, been, been waiting for this for a long time. So making sure no stones left for a turn. Well, I'm sure too, you mentioned you having the health issues. I'm sure like, you know, probably eating healthy and all that was probably a big priority for you as well. So I would imagine that's been helping the cut too. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I touched on this before with uh, another interview I did. Like, uh, right into the end of the day, it's, it's not just a career; it's a lifestyle. You know, we have to, we have to 
eat right, sleep right, stay dedicated, stay on our routine. So uh, and that's something that I grew up doing. So I find comfort in that routine and in that discipline. So, you know, whether I'm sick, whether I'm injured, if I'm fighting, it, it stays the same. I'm a, I'm a very consistent person. Who will be in your corner for this fight? I will have Uri Faber, Danny Castillo, and Jack Mason. In oh, awesome. So my, my usual three. Good stuff. And uh, how do you see the fight playing out? How do you see it going down? Um, I mean, I'm not really one for making calls and predictions. Obviously, I'd always love a finish. Uh, I'm fighting another grappler, which uh, doesn't doesn't happen a lot for me. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm I'm down to grapple with her. So you know, see who uh, plays their game better and uh, test myself against someone that kind of wants to have those grappling exchanges. But at the same time, I've been working really hard on my striking, and you know, I'd I'd also love to get a finish on the feet, but you know, whether it goes three grueling rounds or we take it to the ground, or we stay on the feet. I'm going to be hunting that, that finish, but either way, I'm prepared to, to go wherever it needs to go to get that win on the night. Um, and would like an ideal schedule for you be like three fights this year? Like what would sort of be realistic for you as far as like a fight schedule for the rest of 2024? Yeah, I always aim, I always aim for having about three, but it's never, it's literally never gone the plan for me. So I've, uh, very much shifted my mindset i i'm just solely focusing on this task ahead of me i'm not worrying too much about the future not put too much weight on myself to be to be able to do that you know right now the only thing that matters is fighting and beating jacqueline more on march 16th uh, i would love to stay more active but whatever whatever the world throws at me i'm going to be ready to overcome that and just do my best and keep pushing on moving up in this career at the top of your division, obviously, we have the title fight coming up in April uh, for UFC 300 with uh, Weili Zhang and Yan Shonan. I was curious how you think that fight plays out. Yeah, I've had, I get I get this one asked this one a lot. It's a it's a tough one. You know, both girls are phenomenal athletes, best in the division. They both, you know, train at the highest level. Like it's it's going to be an amazing fight. You know, I mean, I think it very much comes down to who shows up on the night, who implements their game plan. Um, you know, obviously, I'm fortunate I get to see Yan in person and the game she's making. Um, she's night and day different from the, when she first came to Team Alpha Mel. You know, she's been working a lot with Jenny Steele on her wrestling, Raya with her grappling, like obviously her MMA game in general here. So, um, Obviously, I would be biased to say her. I also think Lady is like say, a phenomenal, a phenomenal athlete. So it's it's really hard. I think it's a bit of a pitum, in my opinion. Um, but I know that yeah, I'm putting in the work, and I think if she goes out there and implements her game plan, uh, I definitely see her coming away with the win on the night. What about downtime? What's that looking like? Uh, you mentioned coaching. Uh, you got the dog there. Uh, what what what, uh, what what are you getting up to when you're not uh, in, in training camp and everything? That's a shadow, Where's by the at? way. The shadow, our little, a little stray that uh, shows us. But uh, no, I mean, I'm busy. I like to stay busy. Um, you know, I've been fortunate enough to be able to, you know, when I when I have a new fight and I've been commentating now for A1, uh, doing their ring interviews, staying involved in the sport in different ways. Um, like say, I, I, I coach. Um, I I bought a house recently. I've been renovating that and doing the like the construction work on that on the house. Like I've got my two dogs. I'm train I'm training full time. So uh, I I do artwork. Like I'm I've always got something. I've always got a project. But uh, no, I'm as long as I'm getting my multiple sessions a day training. I just like to fill my time around it and uh, yeah, stay busy. So there's not really there's not really any downtime. <laughs> with yeah. me. No, no, for sure. For sure. You're keeping the, the schedule filled up. Um, as far yeah. as like commentary and like, you know, doing that type of work, is that something you'd like to do? Like even after you're done fighting, do you think, or is, is that something you want to pursue as a career? Or is it just like a good opportunity that you're taking advantage of? Yeah, right now it's a good opportunity that I'm taking advantage of it. Um, it allows me to stay involved in the sport, you know, keep my mind sharp. Like obviously I've got to be analytical of, of the fight and break things down. And same with coaching, you know, it, it kind of forces us to, in, engage in the sport in a different way you know we're breaking down techniques to give us a great appreciation of like the, the i feel like the mental side of things um so i feel like it's a great way for me to keep involved in the sport like you say when i'm not as active um i wouldn't say it's necessarily like you know my, my dream job when i'm done fighting right now i'm i'm a fighter and that's what i'm focused on but it's definitely a great opportunity and something i'm very grateful to be able to do and i I do see myself continuing it in the future, providing that obviously 
they think I do a good enough job and they want to keep me, I would love to, to stay doing it. But uh, like I say, right now I'm just focused on this fight. Absolutely. And we're looking forward to it. It is a UFC fight night, March 16th. Corey, thanks so much for doing this, especially at the gym. I know it's noisy and everything there. Uh, if there's anyone you want to thank, any sponsors, any social media you want to mention, I'll give you the last word. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I mean, my Instagram, Corey McKenna 99. Uh, unfortunately, I've had the support of you know, Pest Pros uh, in Sacramento, um, you know, uh, Tommy Fightwear. My, all my teammates at Team Alpha Male, the girls down in San Diego. Like I've been, you know, I'm surrounded by amazing people, great support, and I'm really grateful for everybody, everybody back home that's watching. So yeah, just a general thank you to everybody.